First up today, let's go to Brandon in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Brandon, thanks so much for joining us. What's your question for Adriel? Hey, uh, Pastor Adriel. So I have another follow-up question about the baptism topic, whether or not someone needs to get rebaptized. So you've talked about Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, but my parents' church won't rebaptize people who are baptized into the Roman Catholic Church. And I don't believe that those baptisms would be legitimate because Catholicism is not Christianity. So I would like to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, Brandon, thank you for that question. Um, and with regard to this one specifically, there are differences among Protestant churches. There are some Protestant churches would, would say, no, we believe that um, these individuals who are baptized in the Roman Catholic Church need to be truly baptized because we don't consider the Roman Catholic Church to be a, a true church. And so we, we reject uh, Roman Catholic baptisms. I don't, I don't hold to that view. Um, in particular, I think because we have, uh, um, in terms at least of our doctrine of God, doctrine of the Holy Trinity, there's there's um, there's there's unity, I guess we could say, in, in that sense, or at least we're on the same page there. And so I think that's that's a really important distinction to make. Whereas um, Unitarians or uh, Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons reject the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. So when they say we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, they don't mean what the Bible says. When Jesus instituted baptism in Matthew chapter 28, and he said, go into all the, the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Right? If, you, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you think that the Son is a created being, a creature. And so in those churches, quote unquote, because they're not true churches, right? An individual is being baptized into the name of a creature. There is no no real understanding of who God is. Whereas we would say that the traditions that maybe we differ with and, and we would say have serious problems maybe with regard to soteriology, the doctrine of salvation, and yet still hold to uh, a proper doctrine of God, a proper understanding of the Holy Trinity. Those, those baptisms, um, insofar as they're administered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit with the intent of being baptized, they're still legitimate because their legitimacy does not rest upon the perfection of the church, um, but the words of institution, the word of God, and, and a proper understanding of who God is. And so that's why there's been there's been a distinction and some debate, as, as I said, among Protestants. Now, one thing that I'll add is there was a controversy, Brandon, uh, in the church, which you might be familiar with, called the Donatist controversy early on. Uh, and it had to do with the fact that you know there were there were Christians who had abandoned the faith. Uh, they were they were lapsed, if you will, uh, under a, a time of persecution. Um, they turned away from the Lord, denied the Lord. Some of them even even pastors. And so there was a big question about. Well, those, those pastors who baptized people and then later turned out to be apostates, they denied the Lord. Were their baptisms legitimate? Did they really perform? I mean, did the, the people that were baptized by those, by those pastors need to go and, and get rebaptized because um, this person walked away from the faith? And, and what the church said was no, um, because the power of baptism, the efficacy of baptism, if you will, is dependent on, on God's word and spirit. Uh, not on the holiness of the minister or even the holiness of the church, if you will, um, but on God and his promises. And so that's that's why we, we draw a distinction there. Thank you for, for listening, and thanks for that question.